see north and south divide yeah division between the languages be- yeah. division between genders be yeah. division between varnas yeah. all these different kinds of divisions were induced phenomena right. in india not yeah. naturally existing Correct. see for that matter even the linguistic division of states see looking at tamil nadu even certain people in karnataka and andhra they have started claiming that kannada is the oldest language uh, telugu is the oldest Close language language it is the superior language more yeah. sophisticated language etc yeah. see these kinds of arguments are heard only in the last 70 years or yeah. in the last 50 years Correct. even more so yeah. right no where in the historical records of india have we seen any kind of fight between the languages of yeah. india yeah every ancient scholar was a multilinguist right. if shudraka can write in sanskrita as well as 14 prakritas mm. that means he is very well versed well, in so many different languages correct yeah one uh, many great scholars of karnataka who uh, who lived uh, more than uh, 50 or 100 years back mm. see for example a scholar called ar krishna shastri mm. who also happens to be my great grandfather my great grand uncle mm. he was well versed in bengali marathi gujarati of course sanskrit a very great scholar of uh, sanskrit sanskrit language kannada of mm-hmm. course mm-hmm. and he was uh, he was very well adept with uh, telugu tamil and uh, malayalam as well mm-hmm. so that multilinguistic uh, abilities was yeah. a common feature common of india feature, yeah. never treating one language superior, superior or to inferior to the other correct yeah. so this division of india based on languages linguistic reorganization of states mm. is definitely not a practical, practical approach yeah. of governing a country correct yeah. see to reorganize a state reorganize a country which has gotten freedom from uh, the predatory rule and uh, religion mm. you will have to take certain practical uh, parameters Point, yeah what is the amount of natural resources available Correct, here yeah. water supply what yeah. is available yeah. and what is the amount of fertile land Correct, yeah. or uh, the agricultural products what are being uh, grown here what is the economic condition yeah. of different people so one must take certain practical parameters Correct, yeah. Ling- language is such an artificial parameter yes. see now the kaveri dispute between karnataka and tamil nadu has become a language yeah, dispute exactly yeah. 100 years back was there any Ka- kaveri dispute <laughs> no. these linguistic divisions were not, not there, there yeah. okay if you start dividing a country based on languages see in karnataka there is this the tulu speaking community mm. they want a separate state, separate state. Uh, there is this kodava speaking community they want a separate state yeah. then now what is kannada is it the old mysore kannada or the north uh, karnataka kannada and people who are in the borders there. are confused yeah exactly <laughs> and see also the tragedy of the situation is in places like kasargod in yeah. uh, kerala kannada was largely spoken correct then once the kerala government came they started closing down the kannada schools so if a child is not allowed so to unfortunate it is or uh, study its own mother tongue learn in its own mother tongue it's so sad yeah. right so you speak about freedom of language freedom of expression freedom of speech etc right. you don't allow the child to speak in its mother tongue correct similarly telugu schools uh, got closed down in karnataka in the bordering regions mm. so this division of languages and fight between the languages was an induced phenomenon that itself is a colonial mentality absolutely right. absolutely very unfortunate you divide people among language you divide exactly. people among race you exactly. divide people among caste it just divide so very that's, unfortunate that's, so we are so even if these things have happened in the past many people ask me why do you have always have to go back to history mm-hmm. let's live today i said whatever we are living today Correct. is all the traumas that we are we have faced before right absolutely <laughs> it's absolutely. all it all comes back right and it it repeats itself right. you know the problems that exist today right. if you go back to the past you will see where's the source of right. this right so exactly. the division of india into linguistic division itself was wrong right absolutely right? and that that's absolutely. the that's the thing that we are finding today also True. right now let's let me come back to a very interesting thought that i got it's not even interesting it's actually very funny um so when this macaulay thing was going on and uh, they were trying to educate indians so called mm. right <laughs> they were looking for a book Mm-hmm. right this is what i have uh, sort of understood mm. now they have a book which they follow uh, whether it is all abrahamic regions bible or quran oh, bible or, or quran Testament right or, yeah. they 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 follow one book yes and they were trying to parallelly see that mm-hmm. we have a library we have <laughs> like a not even a library we have like a 
I don't galaxy know. Of a galaxy of books, right? Yes. What do we follow? We, there are so many things that we follow. But they were trying to find one sort of a book and they unfortunately ended up finding Manusmriti, <laughs> right? So what 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 is it about Manusmriti that people have started calling it like an... It's like an expletive now that you're a Manuvadi, <laughs> right? You're right. a Manuvadi. Manu, are you a Manuvadi or a Manavavadi? Exactly. <laughs> that that has become like yeah. that. I was like, what? Manuvadi means that is like a derogatory word. Mm-hmm. So where does this origin of this Manusmriti? And there are some things which I learned from the internet. Mm. Because when you go search from the internet, there are some verses that you get, mm. which apparently is very discriminatory against women. Mm. That as a man, you have to keep your women in your you know, <laughs> control and all these things are there in Manuvadi. See, this is what Hinduism is all about. <laughs> this is what you know people say. <laughs> Can you sh- throw some light on that, sir? Right. Let's, let's burst the myth out of this. <laughs> right. So now, uh, firstly, regarding the texts, like you very well mentioned, there is one book in the West, uh, in, in Christianity and Islam. If you adhere to Bible, you are a Christian. Mm. If you don't adhere, then you are, uh, there is a bahishkara, it's a blasphemy. It's like you an are, infidel. <laughs> you are an infidel. Yeah. Right. If you adhere to Quran, then you are a Muslim. If not, you are not. Yeah. But here in the Indian tradition, we have numerous texts yeah. and texts are meant to be transcended. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, in Adi Shankaracharya's commentaries, we find, Yatra Vedaha, Vedaha Bhavanti, Tad uh, Ishyata Eva Smabihi, he says. Mm. So, here the Vedas also lose relevance. Mm. And that is exactly what we want. Yeah. That is what Adi Shankaracharya says. Mm. So, once that self realization happens, then you don't need that external Vedas, tools yeah. at yeah. all. Yeah. So, the example also given traditionally is that you use a boat only to cross the river. Mm. Once you have crossed the river, you don't carry the boat on top of your head and uh, walk with that, right? You leave the boat behind, right? right? So we know the importance of the texts and we also know how to transcend the texts. So that is the nature of uh, Indian tradition. In fact, there is a tradition where people also uh, have... This, this community is also there where they don't consider Vedas as the supreme Absolutely. Power. I mean, that is also there. There are these Nastikas. Yeah. Such schools are called Nastikas, Nastikas. Who do not recognize the authority of the Vedas. Vedas yeah. For example, the Bauddhas, right. the Buddhists, the yeah. Jainas, Jaina. and the Charavaka, uh, right. Charavakas, etc. Yeah. There are many such communities. But they were essential parts of Sanatana, Sanatana Dharma. Dharma. Yeah. Uh, they were not rebels, nor were they fighting, nor uh, were they breakaway factions. Correct. Definitely not. Yeah. They did not recognize the superiority of Vedas. Yeah. However, they recognized the values of the Indian uh, system, the Sanatana Dharma. Yeah. The Purusharthas they recognized. Yeah. And in many systems, the uh, four ashramas they recognized. The Dharma Artha. The, uh, the Dharma Artha, Kama Moksha, the yeah. Purusharthas. Yeah. The Ashrama Chatushtaya, which is Brahmacharya, Guruhastha, Vanaprastha, and uh, Sanyasa. Right. That All also these the they Jain- recognized. Uh, um, uh, the Jainas, for example, recognized. Mm. Mm. Buddha also, in some other sense, he uh, yeah. recognized this. Yeah. So the value system of Sanatana Dharma they have very well recognized. Mm. The creative tradition of Sanatana Dharma they have recognized Mm. and what Buddha speaks is a Prakrit version or a dialectual version of the Upanishad Darshana Mm. as in the Upanishadic thought process process. he puts it across in his common uh, language right right? so texts were there and texts were meant to be transcended Mm. and in that sense there was in the true sense democracy in India right so do you want to be a believer in the divine? Do you want to believe in God? If so, which God do you want to believe in? Do you want to believe in Shiva? There is the Shaiva Mata. Do you want to believe in Shakti? There is Shakta Mata. Do you want to worship the sun? There is the Saura Mata. Or if you... uh, uh, And once you believe, in which form do you want to worship him? If you are a believer of Ganesha, then see in the... Uh, in every Vinayaka Chaturthi, we make our own Ganeshas at home. Correct. We give our own creative expression to our own divinity. Correct. Right? First of all, it's a choice whether you want to worship or not. Yeah. Once you have chosen to worship, which of the gods that you want to worship? Yeah. Once you have chosen the god, in which form you want to worship? Right. All that creativity, the freedom of expression, freedom of choice, that has inherently been there yeah. in the Indian tradition. Yeah. So, another point now, coming to the uh, question of uh, Manuspruti. Manuspruti. There have been many different texts on Dharma Shastras mm. written throughout India. Mm. Another uh, interesting uh, thing to note is that most of our texts are suggestive in nature. Mm. They are not prescriptive. Mm. Although some texts have a certain prescriptive tone, mm. 
many of the dharmashastras have these prescript has a prescriptive tone such as you must speak the truth mm. you must not kill another uh, person so this is the compiled wisdom of the past which has come down in the form of various uh, uh, various treatises on uh, dharmashastras mm. right but then again there are uh, some kinds of liberties or some kinds of exceptions also given mm. so for me it's wrong to use a knife on your body Mm. but for a soldier it is okay or for a doctor it is, it is okay. okay he can cut open your body if uh, if he has to give a treatment and for a soldier to defend the country he can use a gun mm. or he can uh, use a weapon yeah. so that vishesha dharmas are also given samanya dharmas are what are applicable to yeah. the community at uh, large mm. and vishesha dharmas for specific professions correct and apad dharmas for uh, specific extreme situations mm. it's all and contextual contextual mm. and also in many of the cases we see that the dharma shastric texts are spatio temporally adapted mm. adopted adapted texts see the the kind of rules that you can have for a person living on the sea coast you can't apply the same kind of rules to a person living in the himalayan Himalaya, region right. on the t- on the top of the mountains yeah in the coastal region you might bathe twice a day it is required that you bathe yeah, twice a day because it's very humid and all exactly that. but in the himalayan region three uh, once in three days it's also okay yeah. because of the climatic uh, conditions correct. there correct so many of these texts were spatio temporarily adoptive adaptive mm. uh, uh, it could be interpreted in different ways in mm. different times mm. etc mm. so manuspruti yes it has very beautiful uh, segments very beautiful verses mm. and there are things there are segments in the manuspruti which seeing from today's perspective mm. may feel kind of oppressive or retarded okay. or patriarchal, uh, patriarchal mm. etc mm. right but then that doesn't reflect the entire thought of the indian community yeah yeah So how many people in the past even followed this manuspruti and how many people are following it today mm. and is it inevitable to follow it today mm. see like i mentioned previously there have been always internal correction factors in india yeah. great visionaries like bhagwan shri krishna uh, chanakya or swami vidyaranya and uh, the later masters also time and again there has been been this internal correction fact, uh, mm. factor mm. see several times what happens like you already mentioned is that it is in the nature of human beings to consider themselves superior, superior to an other uh, community correct. or to an other gender etc yeah. but this ego has to be constantly broken, broken. has to be constantly addressed yeah. and it is very important to give them a bigger vision yeah. right so that has been constantly happening in india the internal correction factors have always been ha- there were there uh, were always this thought leadership that was happening all the definitely, time right? definitely but then in contrast that has never happened in the west that has never happened in islam mm. for example mm. right the kind of women opp- oppression that you see there absolutely no freedom of choice in what clothes they wear mm. no access to education mm. right no uh, uh, there's no freedom of expression yeah and uh, uh, the kind of polygamy and the patriarchy that we find there Correct. and the kind of slavery that we find there in the west mm. and also in islam women are treated no better than animals yeah right yeah, yeah. Uh, the hadith and the other texts themselves give them that perspective Correct. that has never been there in the indian uh, scenario right right devis women have been worshiped in the indian tradition mm. the entire mother earth is treated as a devi mm. and even before we step on the mother earth we have a prayer asking her to forgive us mm. for stepping on her right right, right. right. so we have so much of sacredness associated with the femi- uh, feminine mm. and the entire uh, bharata desha is called bharata mata yeah yeah in fact there's a story also behind this so when uh, shakti the devi shakti dakshayani she immolated herself and uh, she ended her life shiva carries her body and goes around in the skies so one of the versions of the story says that vishnu uh, let loose his chakra and different parts of uh, the devi's body fell in different parts of india right so those 51 or 52 shakti pitas they are different parts, parts of, of the devi yeah yeah and an integration of the devi's parts g- creates the geography mm. of india itself correct yeah so it is said that that was the inspiration behind writing the vande mataram as mm. well mm. for bankim chandra chatopadhyaya okay so this vision of seeing the earth itself as a devi the country itself as a devi, devi yeah. etc that shakti embodied in the landscape yeah. that has been there from times immemorial Correct. in india mm. language has yeah. been uh, given that uh, devi it is uh, seen as uh, the reflection of devi, devi saraswati says, embodiment yeah. of yeah. Uh, devi, devi saraswati vag devi right right, right? Yeah. so 
the feminine has been very greatly respected right. yes manusmriti or if you other texts may have certain segments where it seems like women have been denigrated mm-hmm. but how much of that was really in practice we'll right. also have to see that right see for example in the ramayana one can give many such examples, examples. in the ramayana when rama is banished to the forest uh the sage vasishta who was also the kula guru the kula purohita of uh, dasharatha and uh, the raghuvamsha he says nagantavyam vanam devya sitaya shila varjite anushtasyati ramasya sita prakrutam asanam so this is what the sage vasishta is telling kaikeyi mm. you shila varjite you characterless lady kaikeyi just because rama goes to the forest it doesn't mean that Sita also has to go. Mm. Sita will rule the kingdom as the king and the queen. Mm. She will occupy Rama's throne. Anushtasyati yeah. Ramasya Sita Prakrutam Asanam. Atmeyamiti Ramasya Palaishyati Medinim. She will take care of the entire earth. She will take care of the kingdom of Ayodhya, the Kusala Desha, as the Atma of Atma, Rama. Right. She has got that caliber. She has got that intellectual uh, know-how. Right. She has got that administrative spirit. She has got that Kshatra, Kshatra quality. Kshatra spirit also. Yeah. That means they are trained in warfare. They are trained in administration. Absolutely. They're, they're trained in all the literature of uh, of those times right exactly yeah. exactly it's right. not like she is subservient to only rama because exactly. that's what is portrayed all the time yeah, yeah. that she is Very always subservient subservient to you know rama and everything like okay he told me to jump into the fire i did <laughs> i jumped into the fire see in one sense i must say that sita is a stronger character than rama yeah see when sita gets abducted when she is uh, kidnapped by ravana she is all alone facing all the various all rakshasas the, yeah, yeah. but rama he constantly had lakshmana by his side Correct. we see from the original ramayana itself time and again he goes into some kind of lamentation he goes into uh, depression etc but constantly lakshmana is by his side and he's playing the role of brother friend yeah. mother father all different roles are being played by lakshmana and then, he had also the vanaras yeah then one after the other he makes friends he has sugriva he gets yeah. hanuman and uh, sampati jeta so many people mm. uh, come to his help but sita single handedly faces that huge Correct. empire of uh, the right. rakshasas right 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 so much more a powerful character Correct. in a sense so when compared to rama so uh, the, the thing is that what we are trying to say is that external uh, colonization has actually killed everything the backbone being the temple mm-hmm. being broken mm-hmm. right language right very smartly uh, taken Absolutely. off that language and uh, induced with english right i mean they also started sanskrit schools i i i, I know that i have read that but the sanskrit i mean eventually what happened was even the epic started getting translated in, into english and they started doing that misrepresenting misrepresenting it, it and then that happened and then uh, taking books like this manusmriti and taking people like for example i have read about raja ram mohan roy mm. and taking uh, sati was only uh, you know prevalent in some parts of in india and some communities where you know uh, women used to feel that they need to you know die for their husbands and they used to kill themselves that was only prevalent only in some parts of india not in yeah yeah not see in many parts. i mean e- even with regards to sati there's a history behind it mm. nowhere in the ancient treatises we see women being recommended to end their lives right. upon the death of their husband yeah, yeah. so that uh, we see in the ramayana and the mahabharata even after the death of uh, dasharatha the three wives are very much alive yeah. uh, kausalya sumitra and kaikeyi no that Similarly, the argument is they are kshatriyas uh, no 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 even in the brahmana community we find <laughs> no, even, even in the vaishya the, the shudras shudras is what they, they uh, no no even in the shudra community we have multiple examples, examples where yeah. the women are alive even yeah. after the death of their husband mm. see this sati where uh, uh, rather sahagamana more like sahagamana mm. it became more prominent in the cases where the islamic invasion happened correct so because the they didn't want to be uh, after death yes. they didn't want to be humiliated by the exactly r- invasion especially when the husbands the fathers the brothers the sons they, they died away in the warfare they wouldn't want to get uh, uh, raped and exactly. abused by the islamic invaders yeah, yeah. see that is when the removal of beauty of the women so yeah. shaving of their head, head. and yeah. they are not supposed to wear any ornaments yeah. they are not supposed to wear the kumkuma on their forehead right. all these came because they must not look attractive to the islamic invaders Correct. the islamic men yeah. so the removal of beauty of women 
and also them giving up their lives mm. uh, as sahagamana all that came from the starting from, from the, the time of the islamic right, invasion right yeah. right to the, protect themselves actually exactly to protect yeah. themselves and then so, later on it became again misinterpreted that you are supposed to be like this right exactly. that happened that unfortunate exactly. again right in the indian texts again to give the examples of kavyas we do have instances where the wife gave up her life because she was very deeply attached with the husband mm. we also see instances where the husband gave up uh, his life for the sake of wife okay. for for example rama's grandfather called aja mm. he was very attached to his wife indumati once uh, his wife indumati passes away he becomes very depressed and finally he ends his life as well mm. uh, he meets his death in the mahabharata we find madri ending her life with pandu right so because of their deep love one ending one the end life. life because of the spouse uh, going away passing mm. away that's okay mm. but it was not a recommended tradition mm. in india mm. right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah so that's what i mean i think it's it's colonization at play that language which uh, which again san- we started with sanskrit sanskrit being the common language of india mm. got disintegrated in such a way that now it is considered like a very elitist kind of a language or very what do you call very spiritual kind of a language that people don't want to take it up at right. all but in in a sense in all the local languages that you speak let's say if you are a kannadiga if you are a tamil if you are a telugu or if even if you are a marathi uh, or even speaking hindi sanskrit is already there in definitely, that definitely right definitely. it's le- just that we don't have a common language yeah it is alive in the form of the desha bhashas right, one right. should say so, so i mean the wrong notions of what binds india binds india is english mm-hmm. and what else binds india bollywood <laughs> what else binds india cricket right. these are these have become the ideals of what binds india today rama is binding india <laughs> ayodhya temple is binding india <laughs> so we are united in spirit we want the mathura krishna temple also the ideals of rama krishna shiva and devi they are binding us no, so those, this intangible factor is right, unfortunately right. no those who don't want to agree are. will not agree sir but exactly. i am what i am trying to say that this is actually the real right fact based evidence based things Definitely. that we are talking about Definitely. it's not just uh, uh conditioned by something else right. right because when when why i started prana stories is to gain go into my own roots right. i am not saying i was a person like that hmm. who used to think that english is our binding language right. because we have so many divisions we, i used to think that cricket is our mm-hmm. you know all these things i used to think that mm. way but when i realized i got that indic consciousness that this is my root mm. this is my place why should i you know Uh, it's not like i am alienating english or hating uh, something like that but this has been sort of conditioned in such a way that it it has to be that way right so that is the problem that i have don't you, you know enforce or by sort of uh, deceit right. by cheating you do something like that so that you know i start to follow something else right. so that realization has happened and i want to through prana stories i want to make people realize that you have been cheated right so go go into your own self and see where is your actual right. reality exactly so that's exactly. that's my actual goal right uh, d- don't get cheated absolutely <laughs> absolutely right without our awareness we are looking at our own selves with the lens given by the west yes. through the spectacles given yeah. by the west and for right, right. we are not even aware we are naive we are innocent about it correct right yeah, yeah. so first of all we have to give up those spectacles right. and wear indian spectacles right. the indian vision right. has right. to be right and that to if if you keep wearing that you will realize that how deep it is exactly right yeah. it's not it it will not happen overnight right a generation has to you know right. because we as a generation at least 200 to 300 to 400 this means how many generations at least six or seven generations yes. have you know uh, more than that 400 500 years is like 20 generations 20 generations have carried it forward yes. right to for for this work to happen another So, uh, so many generations have to happen absolutely so if you don't start now we will lose it yes it's yes. because if you see we are the oldest civilization even today existing absolutely. because of our democratic systems yes. if we didn't have the democratic systems where is e- egyptian civilization mm-hmm. today where is mayan civilization right. today right. i can see some aspects of shamanic 
uh, civilizations in south america yeah. that too they remain in only in certain right. pockets right. the native you know south american the classical greco roman culture is gone, gone. totally gone totally right? gone right yeah. it, it's not Very there unfortunate. it's yeah. not there yeah. so with the coming of christianity and islam 1500 years were called dark ages in europe exactly coming of Cri- all art and science everything was ridiculed and destroyed the ancient uh, greco roman right. ones right yes, sorry, right please, yeah. yeah so i, I Yeah. Uh, this is this is my own realization of so many things happening and right. i want my audience to understand what is going on right. and not just think about it like oh no you are you know manuvadi or yeah. hindutvavadi or something like that i am not doing it for any politics of anything that yeah. i am trying to please yeah. uh, uh, the dispensation of today or whatever i am not doing it i am doing it for myself right. and i want the audience to realize it for themselves right. Right. that where you are Hmm. what you do it it could you could be anywhere in the world but it's like a journey into the self right right not be ashamed of where where you belong absolutely right so absolutely. that's we that's don't have to be apologetic right that. right yes. today japan is successful speaking their own language sure, sure. china is successful successful in the sense i'm saying materially <laughs> yes because that's the success which yes. people sort of measure right yeah Chinese are still successful they are the best in the world in terms of manufacturing but they use their own language right Germans the yes. best technologists right, right? you have uh, done robotics from yes. i think from <laughs> switzerland switzerland yes. right you have done your by the way the audience have to know is not just a sanskrit <laughs> scholar he is also a robotics experts <laughs> right so he has done it from switzerland so th- they use their own language right. german and right. even uh, spanish people right yeah. they, they uh, apart from espanol they don't speak yeah, when right. it when it comes to india yeah. it's a problem it's completely <laughs> mixed up fortunately and uh, i i i don't know so okay let's let's speak about yourself a little sir <laughs> what okay. how did you get into this um well it I, i i would have to say that it was traditionally there in my household and also in the society around me okay so the sanskrit bhasha the classical kannada and also the different forms of art that was somehow there in the extended family directly in my family mm. etc so that inspiration was uh, constantly there and uh, uh, i was uh, studying sanskrit from my school days and not just some sanskrit, uh, sanskrit language i was in- interested in languages in general okay so i used to write uh, poems even in english and kannada right from my primary school days this is all in bangalore uh, all in bangalore okay. all my education until the until my plus 2 happened mm. uh, here mm. and by the you are a kannada speaking family. yeah i am a kannada speaking family, family. native okay. of this very region okay right so i got uh, introduced to a fantastic scholar called uh, shatavadani dr okay. r ganesh yeah. who is a multilingual fi- uh, yeah. uh, scholar and uh, polyglot polymath etc yeah. and uh, shatavadani yes who can answer uh, 100 questions 100 at a questions. time yeah. right so uh with his uh, guidance under his guidance i started uh, studying the classical works of uh, sanskrit uh, sanskrit kavyas and uh, the shastras etc mm, mm. and uh, by then i had gotten exposure to uh, vedanta as well mm. shrimati manikarni kamma who was also the mathematics teacher of dr ganesh oh. was my vedanta teacher wow. my vedanta okay. guru in fact she is the one who initiated dr ganesh into spoken sanskrit and some of the vedantic uh, concepts wow as well. she is the guru of shatavadani <laughs> sir that will yes. be like even more <laughs> uh, yes <laughs> she is like yeah. But she was a mathematics teacher at uh, UVC uh, okay. the central uh, engineering yeah college. shata means 100 right 100 yes so shata she must be sahasra then <laughs> <laughs> no her expertise was in one domain in okay. mathematics and in uh, vedanta yeah anyway so and from a young age i had uh, some exposure to music as well mm. uh, into flute and uh, tabla mm. then it was again inspired by dr ganesh that i uh, st- learned uh, j- uh, learned the greek language while i was in uh, switzerland Uh, i was uh, pursuing my masters in robotic systems and control at eth uh, zurich mm. so the university also offered language courses so i completed uh, uh, something called the grosses deutsche sprach diploma in german okay so that's the highest level of uh, the german language wow. in some sense okay while i was in switzerland okay and through the german language was the medium of instruction in switzerland okay so through the german language i learned the greek language so the teacher was teaching in the german language okay. uh, and the greek language was being uh, taught oh so all the classics of the greek greeks they were uh, taught through the german language german. to us okay. the original greek script of course 
the original text large parts of homer's epics mm. and uh, large parts of aristotle euripides sophocles mm. and aeschylus we studied in the original greek language itself mm-hmm. but the medium of instruction was german okay and that once you know the greek language understanding latin is not very difficult like i gave the previous example one can easily understand odia or marathi wow. or gujarati if you are well versed in the sanskrit bhasha wow. so latin became quite easily accessible oh, okay then because i knew the german language the other neighboring countries such as the dutch mm. the flemish mm. the danish the swedish mm. uh, all those languages became more or less accessible wow. uh, to me although i might not be able to actively, uh, actively use it use. passively i'll be able to understand, understand quite a it, okay. few things wow. and once you get a hang of the latin language the ancient the classical latin the later day latin and the italian languages uh, become easy so italian spanish and portuguese are born out of uh, the latin uh, language okay so somehow learning some of these ancient languages gives you a whole variety of Correct. Uh, languages so you can actually literally live any part of the world <laughs> right probably yeah. not in china if you <laughs> okay chinese is, is a different language yes language okay. family okay right? but in europe or in the americas or yes. somewhere yes. anywhere if perhaps someone <laughs> drops you somewhere i'll be able to loosely manage <laughs> okay. that's my nice. i must say okay right then i also had interest in other performing arts in uh, drama mm. dance etc mm. uh, so i used to perform flute as well uh, in foreign countries and uh, in india mm. uh, now that has taken a back seat unfortunately mm. my more uh, my focus is more on uh, literary activities so w- when you when you said you had a uh, uh, phd in robotics right and then a masters in masters robotics. in robotics yes. after that you didn't try for any corporate job or anything uh, well <laughs> i was because that's a general of, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, me doing inge- i did my engineering the bachelor's in engineering from nit suratkal okay so oh, that, that itself is like a <laughs> big thing to get uh, admission uh, to uh, maybe yeah it is but from <laughs> the youngest of my days i wanted to be in the literary domain the art domain the philosophy domain okay, yeah. that was my interest mm. but in the uh, urban landscape you are somehow driven in that uh, direction yeah, driven yeah. Uh, in the direction of Again, engineering it's the same thing which we all go through studies. that you take up engineering yeah. be materialistically uh, <laughs> successful yeah. and you know get a job and stuff like that that's yeah. the usual line which we have exactly right? yeah so right. yeah so i i went to the, uh, not blaming anyone but that's the nature of the urban uh, yeah. uh, growing uh, children mm, <laughs> yeah children. i mean uh, it's so i mean you excelled in both <laughs> that's the fantastic thing right no, it depends because on what excellence means uh, n- no i mean <laughs> nit suratkal is not a joke sir <laughs> i know that it is yeah. it is equivalent to iits mm-hmm. and the entrance into that because i have certain friends who have gotten into nit mm-hmm. and I, i know how mm-hmm. it is so i i i'm i'm sure that you are good at both at your mm-hmm. regular academics and also language <laughs> and you went further to study robotics yeah yeah, yeah. and after that what happened uh, well so honestly perhaps my intellect my brain was working well in the engineering domain mm. but my heart was uh, not there in the languages you were yeah uh, arts in general, general. languages literature mm. uh, in particular liberal arts uh, or, or uh, classical like, arts i would uh, say yeah classical arts yeah classical arts. so i used to enjoy sculptures and uh, painting mm. as well mm. so throughout my stay in switzerland Uh, i must have spent at least 100 or 150 days in italy mm. italy to uh, visit the museums Museum. where the classical sculptures yeah. the ancient greek roman sculpture. sculptures yeah. are uh, yeah. present so they are very much in tune with the perspective of art that we have in india, india. Mm. see i also would like to tell an incident which i have quoted in the introduction of uh, this book the homer epic yeah so while i was learning the greek language there uh in switzerland most of my classmates were the caucasian the swiss the germans the italians there were many of them were catholic christian some of them were protestants probably mm. i used to relish the greek uh, stories the stories of their gods the stories of their heroes etc but many of my classmates found it very ridiculous mm. how can there be multiple gods how mm. can there be a female god mm. how can a god create love how can a god induce love mm. how can a god create seasons see for us it's so natural, natural yeah. to imagine divinity everywhere isha vasyam idam sarvam entire world is the habitat of the divine is the residence of the divine and the creation itself is enveloped by the divine we don't see the difference between the creator and the creation 
Everything is divine. There is nothing non-divine to the Indians, right? So we attribute the seasons, the rains, the sunlight, uh, everything to the divine, the rivers, the mountains, everything. So it was very natural for me to appreciate the Greco-Roman uh, culture and the Greco-Roman uh, stories. But these people found it uh, ridiculous. Mm. See, that Indian Sanatana Dharma, that being rooted in the Sanatana, Sanatana Dharma, Dharma yeah. can make us appreciate every other so-called pagan cultures. Mm. We can feel for them. Correct. We find that emotional compatibility with them yeah so that is what made me pick up the language in mm. the first place mm. uh, or try to study uh, the language mm. anyway so most of my stay there in Switzerland I uh, toured uh, Italy I toured Greece I toured uh, Turkey and many of the museums in Europe mm. are trying to understand more deeply the Greco-Roman uh, art and uh, the religion mm. and the philosophy etc mm -hmm. then constantly I had uh, connection with India as well so by the age of 25, by then I had started a PhD in neuroscience, by okay. the way, uh, back there in Switzerland. Wow. <laughs> it's mind-blowing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the neuroscience of vocal development, wow. how does speech come about? How does speech learning, again, in some sense, language learning okay. happen? Okay. So what is the neuromechanism mm. behind it? So that was uh, the course of study. Mm. But then I felt that I'm fooling myself. Mm. At the age of eight, uh, at the age of 60 or 80, I must not look back and feel that have lived the life what the society wanted, wanted me to live, yeah. but I didn't live the life which I wanted, wanted to, to be, live, yeah. right? So, therefore, I came back to India by the age of uh, 25. Mm. And that is what Krishna also terms in the Bhagavad Gita as Vadharma, where your interest, your passion, your skill, occupation, all of them converge. Correct. So, that is what today is popularly called Ikigai, Ikigai as well, yeah. the uh, Japanese word. So, yeah. that is what is Swadharma. Mm. So, whenever you are practicing Swadharma, your own passions, you are in the best state of happiness. Correct. Yeah. When you are doing something that you don't like, you feel stressed, you feel annoyed, you feel irritated, yeah. etc. You might be earning money. Switzerland or Germany or the US is a very comfortable place to live in terms of material, material uh, yeah, yeah. uh, well-being. But even today, the threat for life there, etc., that's a different topic. Yeah. But then the emotional comfort and the spiritual comfort that you get through Sanatana Dharma and in this Bharatiya soil cannot be matched by anything which is yeah. uh, foreign. Right. So that is what inspired me to return to India. Wow. And thereafter, I've been constantly in the domain of writing. Mm. I write in the English mm. uh, uh, Sanskrit, Kannada, and German languages. Mm. I read, uh, I write on the topics related okay. to Greek, Latin, German, Sanskrit, uh, all, all these languages. Okay, well. okay. Uh, so one, one might ask, if you wanted to follow your passion and all that, how? I mean, this is practical question, mm -hmm. right? Uh, either you should have a good family backing, mm -hmm. or you should because at, at the end of the day you have to pay your bills. Right, right. right? How did you manage that? Well, I must say that my parents were very supportive. The extended family was uh, very supportive. Okay. So I could afford uh, taking a couple of years uh, break to sit and think back. Okay. What else I can do other than engineering. Okay. See, this privilege, unfortunately, probably my parents' generation or my grandparents' generation, they did not have. Yeah. So I definitely have to thank the support system I support had. Support system. Right? So for them, earning their bread, earning their uh, bowl of rice itself was a very challenging thing. Mm -hmm. Right? They couldn't have taken these uh, kinds of uh, liberties. liberties. Okay. So that comfortable environment was already there mm. for me to kind of pursue whatever I'm passionate about. Mm. Right? So then, also what what I have also realized is that when you are honest, when you are sincere and pursuing your passion, passion. you will get the kind of uh, recognition or the kind of opportunities. Mm. The world itself will uh, offer opportunities right. to you. Yeah, right. So that is what in the last eight years when mm. uh, being in the domain of uh, art, philosophy, literature, etc. Mm. So that is what I have realized. Mm. So it has been a very happy journey nice, uh, thereafter. Nice. So uh, the divine itself has <laughs> intervened and taken care of all Absolutely, your... Absolutely, I must say right. that. Yeah. That's fantastic, sir. That's, yes. that's so nice to yes. hear. You, do you want to talk about your book a little? Uh, the latest <laughs> book of yours? Okay. Do you want to sh show? Like oh, uh, all right, all right, sure. Yeah. Uh, before that, maybe I'll speak about uh, this other work. Yeah. So this is... Uh, maybe you can show it oh, there. Okay. So this original is a Kannada work by A.R. Krishna Shastri, Professor A.R. Krishna Shastri, mm. a stalwart of uh, Kannada language. Mm. And it is said that he is the one who sculpted the prose uh, Kannada. Okay. About 100 years back. Okay. So he wrote a condensed version of the Mahabharata called Vachanabharata in Kannada. Okay. 
and that was a classic and it is uh, amongst the best sellers even today wow. so this is an english translation of that by myself and another friend called hari ravi kumar the essential mahabharata the essential mahabharata Super. so th- we wrote this because today there is lot of misinterpretation mm. and misrepresentation of the mahabharata people don't even know what, what the original is right. uh, trying to say right so to resolve this problem about uh, 60 years back ar krishna shastri wrote it in kannada wow. the vachana bharata right uh, today we'll have to put it in the english, english medium fun, yeah. so at least people know what the what? original is saying right. before they come up with their theories right. and yeah. uh, whimsical because a uh, lot of interpretations have lost in translation exactly right exactly. lost in transition lost in translation also <laughs> absolutely <laughs> right absolutely so it's it will be a lovely read sir yeah see in many in most of the cases we have retained the original sanskrit terms wow. see there are many untranslatables correct yeah dharma you can't translate moksha you can't translate, translate. purohita you can't you can translate, translate. Okay. if you uh, translate let purohita as a priest that is delimiting the meaning yeah exactly right yeah. so purasthita somebody who used to lead the entire civilization standing at the front mm, yeah. so he is the pur- uh, purohita, purohita he used to care about the vyashtihita and the samashtihita mm. the global good and the individual good not just Such, someone who d- does rituals uh, yeah exactly yeah. so this bigger spiritual perspective is lost if you just translate him as, as a priest, priest yeah right yeah, yeah. So, so therefore similar many of the sanskrit untranslatables we have uh, retained Super. here in this uh, work wow so So similarly i'm working on another uh, thing called essential ramayana okay so both in kannada and That'll english nice. uh, i'm yeah. writing it will uh, soon come out mm. by the ramanavami mm. also in a sense to commemorate the ayodhya mm. the ramachandra bhumi also mm. which is coming up okay so now this one this work uh, 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 it comparatively studies the ramayana the mahabharata the iliad and the odyssey Hmm. the ramayana and the mahabharata by valmiki and vyasa of course hmm. and the iliad and the odyssey are uh, two mahakavyas the epic poems by hmm. homer right so many of the values like i said earlier uh, in today's uh, so session so this book captures the similarities between uh, similarities and contrasts contrast uh, between the indian tradition and the greco roman tradition oh, wow. the similarities are more okay. to be honest okay. right so the first two chapters here are in a sense a semi annotated narration of the iliad and the odyssey okay. so the first chapter runs to about uh, 100 pages mm. there uh, i go as the story of the iliad goes okay. and in the footnotes i try to analyze the parallels that we find um, in the okay. indian tradition okay. the dharmic conflict the conflict of values between the characters there mm. how that is also reflected in mm. the indian uh, mm. uh, stories I also analyzed the different aesthetic features there mm. the different kinds of shabdalankaras the arthalankaras mainly mm. the figures of speech or the different uh, features of dhvani or suggestion mm. the different kinds of suggestivity mm. uh, that comes out uh, there and the purusharthas the dharmartha okay. kama and moksha all that as it comes out through the greek or roman so epics. anybody who wants to know about greek philosophies greek epics they can read yeah. this absolutely and also find parallels in, yeah. in our so the first chapter throws light on the iliad the mm. second chapter on the odyssey mm. the third chapter is a a higher level philosophical study of the four epics the ramayana the mahabharata iliad wow. and the odyssey and so you fourth, get everything in one book <laughs> yeah That's fourth fantastic. chapter is about the construction of the language the greek language how it can be analyzed through the perspective of indian aesthetics okay see in india we have at least a 100 different alankaras called mm. figure which are figures of speech uh, defined mm. right many of them at least 30 of them homer has used but even today the western tradition has not even recognized them mm. india ha- can provide the tools to even recognize the beautiful features of the western t- uh, tradition mm. the value of the w- of the greek or roman tradition can be very beautifully identified through the indian perspective mm. so that is why the title of the book the indian perspective of truth and beauty okay in homer epics okay okay so indian perspective of truth is the purusharthas the okay. dharma artha kama and moksha okay. which very beautifully come out in the homer epics nice. and the indian perspective of beauty is the different aspects of abhinaya Abhin- the different aspects rasa. of uh, dhvani the different rasas and uh, the different alankaras which oh. come out in the wow. homeric epics wow. Wow. unfortunately the west even today has not converged into a theory of philosophy a theory of aesthetics it is all very divergent very, yeah. and with the coming of islam and christianity they have gotten a lot of religious biases mm. religious biases have penetrated philosophy and aesthetics mm. unfortunately in the west mm. but in the sanatana dharma it has been pure of any kind of bias yeah. the objective vision can be provided by in sanatana dharma in that sense dharma. this is more scientific than anything <laughs> <laughs> well, I I was say so. It also kind of 
establishes the universality of the principles of uh, sanatana dharma mm. the principles developed in uh, sanatana dharma mm-hmm. right. uh, uh, let me just quote one shloka sh- from manuspruti sure, sure, which sure. have quoted here that is more interesting yeah so here in the introduction i quote it and i must thank uh, dr r ganesh shatavadani dr r ganesh yeah. for uh, leading me uh, to that shloka mm. so the manuspruti says just a minute it says in its uh, second chapter of the 20th verse etad desha prasutasya sakashat agra janmanah swam swam charitram shikshayam prutivyam sarva manavah so this is the vision with which i have written so what it says is that etad desha prasutasya mm. a person born in this land in this bharat desha in this sanatana bhumi sakashat agra janmanah the land itself the sanatana dharma itself gives him a superior perspective mm. an objective perspective mm. with that perspective swam swam charitram shikshayan prutivyam sarva manavah mm. with that superior perspective the sanatana dharmis the bharatiyas can help people understand their own cultures yeah. we can go and help the greeks understand their, their own, own ancient cult- greco roman civilization Correct. we can help the romans understand their own culture better right. so that is the superior objective philosophical spiritual vision that has been provided in this land wow. and that has been so beautifully identified in in manuspruti even before christianity and islam was born right. so we see the superiority of manuspruti Correct. right there yeah, yeah. from this the, the, uh, the vision of the world is one kind of a vision exactly. right that's that's there in two lines absolutely, absolutely. right <laughs> whoever yeah. says that we are a, a separatist or uh, you know what do you call majoritarian kind of a feel they can yeah. just from these two lines you will right. get to understand right yes so uh, so people for people who say language is just a medium medium of communication nothing else you know that's that's what the argument goes it's just a medium of communication and that's how english got introduced and then we are just even speaking english today so what is the way forward sir mm. let's let's say if we want to revive some aspect of it i don't think it will be 100% at yeah. all but at least to some extent what's the way forward See, speaking English is not wrong, mm. uh, to be honest. Or mm. reading books in English or writing books in English is not wrong because that has become the global language mm. uh, today. Mm. But however, if you want to enjoy beauty in a language, mm. you'll have to go to the Sanskrit Bhasha, the most sophisticated, the most beautiful of uh, the languages. Mm. And the literary works in uh, Sanskrit Bhasha, Sanskrit language, it is very difficult to translate it to an, into an alien language mm. like English or uh, German or French. Mm. It has to be read in the original. Right. you can translate it a little bit to the classical prakritas mm. or the classical desha bhashas it can be translated into classical telugu or classical kannada or classical tamil but still there is something lost in the translation mm. so for the beauty of the sanskrit bhasha it has to be read in the original mm. right if you read the works of kalidasa if you read the original valmiki ramayana see uh, like i mentioned i'm writing the essential ramayana i feel a sense of frustration i am not able to capture the <laughs> lofty thoughts of Love. valmiki right. through the english language yeah it could be my deficiency but more than my deficiency it's the deficiency of the language the language itself right so because today it is inevitable that we want the youngsters and sometimes the older people also to understand the vision of the ramayana hmm. i'm writing it in english because it has become inevitable today right right see today you and i are speaking in the english language because we are not finding an other common language correct yeah it should ideally have been in the sanskrit bhasha we should have ideally correct. spoken correct. the sanskrit or language or we could have spoken yeah. in kannada yes. but then there are uh, people, people who who don't understand who, i'll have to do understand. subtitling <laughs> exactly <laughs> right so one will have to go to the sanskrit language for sure joy that the language can give you mm. and also if you have to reach certain adhyatmic heights uh, spiritual heights mm. then sanskrit bhasha can be the medium mm. right mm. so for the material purposes you can uh, uh, rely upon english mm. for emotional and spiritual purposes mm. one should go to the sanskrit bhasha mm. and the derivatives of the sanskrit bhasha which are the desha bhashas today mm. the uh, the kannada telugu or malayalam marathi gujarati mm. whatever be the desha bhasha okay so from for material benefits i also heard that uh, Uh, sanskrit is also a very conducive language for coding is that so yeah well yes and no sanskrit is a very codified and a very sophisticated language mm. yes it has been very beautifully 
the grammar of the language has been very beautifully uh, codified by Panini mm. and his successors and some of his ancestors probably also had uh, done that. But then the manner in which Sanskrit can be actually used for any kind of computing has not yet been uh, proven until today. Mm. Although people have this whimsical notions of uh, Sanskrit being very easy for computers or whatever, mm. that has not yet been completely explored okay. or exploited. Okay. Uh, it may or may not have the potential. Mm. But however, the computers have helped uh, the Sanskrit language a lot. In right, fact, right. Dr. Ganesh keeps saying mm. the different kinds of search engines, there's a different kinds of dictionaries, mm. the OCR, optical recognition of characters, mm. uh, for all different kinds of scripts, uh, starting from Brahmi, Sharada, Tiglari, and uh, Nandinagari, and uh, uh, Grantha, many of those uh, character recognition softwares have been developed. Mm. And digitalization and uh, storage, etc. So the computers have helped in mm. the... Uh, in propagation of this knowledge system, in propagation of the of the language, mm. in uh, some sense. See, the channel itself is an evidence for that. Right. right? We are using technology for propagating uh, this language. Correct. In a sense. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, so uh, the technology has helped Sanskrit to a large extent. Than Sanskrit helping technology. technology. Okay. Another point also to note here is that everything need not have a material purpose. Yes. Yeah. Right. There, there can be purposes beyond the material mm -hmm. realm also. Correct. And in that, through that perspective, we'll have to look at the mm -hmm. Sanskrit Bhasha. No, I mean, I'm, I'm trying language. to see, let's say, <laughs> there was always a forcing function for people to learn something. Yeah. Right? So, mm -hmm. I was just trying to see if there is a forcing function to gain material something. Being happy is a very good inspiration, <laughs> right? If, if you want to be happier individuals, <laughs> Yeah. And if you want happiness to la last eternally, right. then read the Sanskrita Kavya, uh, right. the Sanskrita Shastra. No, but today's yeah. happiness is unfortunately equalized to material benefits right. or probably travel or money or whatever, right? It's all connected to, it's ultimately comes there. Right. So that is what everybody thinks as happiness. But we should look beyond that. Beyond that, yes, I understand. Yeah. But I was trying to see if there is a forcing function so that, you know, Sanskrit can be learned. Mm. And then for, for example, because everything is going IT, AI and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So can you people can learn? You become naturally intelligent yeah, right. by reading Sanskrit. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. okay, that's good. Okay. okay. That's fine. So um, any like parting shot, do you have anything to say to the audience? Like, like a message or something that you want to say? No, want to share? I feel extremely grateful. I get uh, tears of joy for having born in this land, in mm. this Bharata Bhumi, right. for being a part of this uh, Sanatana Samskriti, mm. this Sanatana Dharma. Mm. I don't think my life would have been this joyful and uh, this spirited if I was born elsewhere mm. in a different religion or in a different country. Yeah. So I'm very thankful to this motherland and uh, uh, to the Bharata Mata. Mm. And I'm extremely thankful for to your channel for inviting me and carrying out this uh, conversation. The pleasure is always ours, sir. Because the thing is that when I started to ponder about the purpose of life, mm. right? The, I Because material, uh, you, you keep gaining material. You buy a car, you buy a, this thing, you buy anything. You keep going like it's never ending. It's like... Uh, I, after a week, the new car becomes old. Absolutely. Everything becomes... And I was starting to, uh, you know, uh, sort of ponder what's going on. Correct. So now the purpose is... I have a... I wouldn't say very clear, but there is a purpose to... to say gratitudes to this land, as right. you said. To, to have born in this land itself is a big thing. Right. Right. right? So my purpose is to give back Absolutely. in whatever way I it can. It is called runapragna. We have that sense of gratitude, right. gratefulness. Right. That, right? That's the thing I'm doing. Yeah, beautiful. See, in the Indian tradition, in the Sandhya Vandadam ritual, we thank our own body. Yeah. See, today I have got capable hands and feet yeah, yeah right i have to be thankful to that my eyesight is okay yeah i have to be thankful to that i have to be thankful to the land i have to be thankful to the panchaputas correct i have to be thankful to my parents to yeah. teachers everything yeah, yeah. so my existence today for my existence today the entire world has contributed, contributed. the entire universe has contributed correct. yeah and the sanatana samskriti has contributed correct so that gratefulness runa pragna is some a signature feature in yeah, india yeah yeah right see that is why we are not oppressive on the nature. Yeah. We are submissive, submissive to the nature. Yeah, right. We adore the nature. Exactly. So it's a very brilliant task that you have undertaken. Yeah. So, so giving this runa pragna. Correct. Because when you when I start thinking of 
the culture or the condition that has been given to us that individual freedom individualistic things or you know kind of woke kind of a thing right uh i started to think f- for me to get created myself i i i had to have had grandparents yes. and they, their grandparents had their own right. grandparents their right. grandparents like that right. at least 64 people <laughs> were needed right, right, if right. you if absolutely. you do the math right absolutely they had to love each other and right, and right, finally right, my right. parents and then right. I, i i i started i mean i i came into this world right so there were 64 people which is a community in itself <laughs> right, right? Right, right so i have to be mindful of from where i come from right right the mother roots there mm. so i cannot be saying that i am you know myself right. i this is my kind of uh, uh, you know I, i have my rights and all that that's that's like that's a very wrong notion right right you have you also have a certain duty yes. to do which is yes. which is what i am trying probably trying to do mm-hmm. that this is my gratitude to this yes. land and i think everybody probably needs to recognize that Absolutely. and do the same then your life will be much more enriching right, you'll right. get you'll get more real to yourself absolutely is what absolutely. i think certainly certainly sir thank you so much thank, thank you. you so much for doing this uh, i don't know I, I, i'm really lucky because when whenever i started to start doing this things have manifested on its own like divine intervention that happened in your life <laughs> such scholarly people have come to my this place and made this and blessed this place mm-hmm. so much thank you so much sir thanks a lot thanks a lot namaste